Good morning, beautiful being. It is great to be out here. There's so much to show you. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to start here with the dahlias. Look at that. They just go bananas. And you think, why have they got white bits on them? That's because the sun bleaches the flowers. So, you know, they start off this incredible colour and then the sun does that to them. Um, but, wow, really, they're so fabulous. Come on, camera, sort it out. Okay, change the focal length and now it knows what it's doing. So, yeah, this is the time of the dahlias. It's amazing. They're so bright and um, they're beautiful with the purple foliage of the coatness in behind. Um, what else have we got? We've got so much. Look, look, this is the view. There's the dahlia, there's the lilies, and behind them you can see the tall white thalictrum. Good morning, Andrew! And the roses. I have got this planting right. This is a new planting. Old bushes move from elsewhere, but a new planting. There's going to be other stuff there, but I can't plant anything there yet. It's got to be cleaned out properly first. There's the foxglove. There's always one. I insist on there always being one. And the sweetheart rose which is absolutely thriving here. Look at that, it's doing so well. Roses need light, who knew? Um, and this one I'm hoping will do better here. It's actually cutting that I planted at least 10 or 15 years ago. That's all it's done. So I think it was in the wrong place. So hoping for better results. And the thalictrum is glorious. I love this thing. Good morning, everybody. And look, we have fuchsia flowers. Get it close so you can see them. I always remind me of little ballerinas. You have snow. Yes, I know it's ridiculous, isn't it? But we're all on the same planet. Great to see you, Andrea. Compassion's sort of in between acts at the moment. Um, and so is that one. See, they all come at different times. But the Willem Rose is just doing its fabulous thing. And it is fabulous. Fresh flowers that haven't been rained on. Aren't they glorious? Hi, Jen! Great to see you! Good morning, good morning, glorious beings! Um, and more roses, because you got to enjoy them. Here's the iceberg, which actually looks like a rose bush! It's so nice to have a rose that looks like a rose bush. They've been so miserable for so long, because this lovely cherry tree was too green and stopped the light from coming through, and roses need light. Um, we've got some massive lilies coming on here. Um, and again, I'm hoping this rose will do better next year, but look, it has the most amazing flowers. Single stemmed red rose, you know. So, there's that, but this is the main highlight, and I saved it to last so people have more time to come on so they don't miss it. Look, 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 look. Isn't that awesome? This is the iris I thought I'd lost, and it's fantastic. Just beautiful. It is called Lady in Waiting, and this is how it should look, and I'm so delighted I still have it, and you know, this huge plant, which is thriving. Um, the iris used to be over there where all of those sort of grape-looking leaves are. Those are Japanese anemones, and when the cherry tree got too big, they were shaded and they didn't do well. This is the other fantastic thing that's just come out today. Not surprisingly, this one is called Summer Storm. Good morning, Linda! With, oh, right, weather disturbance, no Grand Sun Nebula shuttle. Well, that's awesome. And yeah, this is a magnificent flower. It's so good. Um, so yeah, I'm just really pleased I can share them with you because it's been a long time since I've done so well. And um, let's not forget these fabulous Asiatic lilies. They're so bright. I can sometimes take them for granted because I have a lot of them. But um, they're glorious. Right, speaking of things blooming and amazing stuff happening and opening up in our lives, right? I want to talk about synchronicities today. Full credit to the beautiful being who gave me the idea because I was fishing for ideas and I said, what do you think? Talk about synchronicities. Um, so, yeah, grateful. Synchronicities, what is a synchronicity? Well, a lot of us are familiar with the parking fairy. Yeah, we are all coming into bloom, I tell you. At this time, of, of, at this time in history, it just seems like a lot of things are coming to bloom, coming to fruition, or at least starting. It's exciting. Um, so a synchronicity, people call them coincidences. 
they call it dumb luck. When things just happen and you think, oh wow, that's amazing. Where did that come from? That's such an incredible thing. You know, I was thinking of you just yesterday and here you are calling me up and I haven't heard from you for Those kinds of things, right? Or when you've been looking for, and I've, I have these happen a lot now, way more than I used to. I was thinking, and I'll tell you about this, I was thinking idly a few weeks ago, mainly because there's a cushion that I use all the time, that grey one that's on my lap, which is almost completely worn out, right? It's completely worn out. And I just had this idle thought, oh, I could really use a few more cushions. And a couple of weeks later, I was walking up the road at an unusual time because I... I needed to rest after my meditation it was it was deep and I was short of sleep or something so I had the walk after after I did whatever it was that morning so I was walking up the road at 10 30 or 11 or something instead of half a seven and there's a building site going on in one of the houses there and there's a skip the amount of stuff I've got out of skips some of you will relate and there were these really nice looking faux fur cushions sitting, I mean beautiful, you know, faux fur. Glorious rich chocolate brown with sort of stripy things in them and I thought, oh, they actually look quite nice in my lounge. This is how I think. Because the idea of sending textiles to the tip really is offensive. Because they sit there for hundreds of years. Synchronicity. Yes, your vibrations come in alignment with the universe. So clearly, I had no resistance to letting that in. There were these cushions. It was drizzling. It wasn't raining, but it was drizzling. And I could see that, you know, they were getting a bit wet. And I thought, well, yeah. So I looked at them and I walked on up. And then on the way down, I thought, bugger it. So I asked the um, builders of anybody, you know, do you think anyone would mind if I took these? They said, no, go for your life. They just appeared there this morning. So they went from the building site, they just appeared. Somebody decided they didn't want these cushions, which looked really new and in really good shape, and stuck them in the skips. Like, why do people do this? Anyway, to get them home, and then I think, oh, I'd better open them up and make sure, you know, dry them off because you don't want cushions getting mouldy and all that. Hi, Tracy! And I got a bit of a surprise. I opened them up and discovered they weren't faux fur. They were real fur, and I thought, oh, you know... Anybody who's, I mean, I don't want to think about the things that happen to the beautiful animals whose skins are currently in cushions on my, in my lounge. But, you know, to then say, oh, well, I'm embarrassed because this is an animal product and I bought it. And, you know, and they were stuffed, the, the cushions inside are duck, down, duck feather, for God's sake. And I thought, oh, heavens, really nice, top quality things. They cost a lot of money and somebody just threw them away. It dishonors the resource. So anyway, I thought, oh, fine, I'm going to dry these out. I'm going to appreciate them. I'm going to honor them. I'm going to use them. Gift from the universe. But I was just kind of, oh, my God, here I am. I've probably got a thousand bucks worth of cushions in my, four of them. A thousand bucks of cushions in my, in my um, you know, front entrance way drying out. And I had to turn them all inside out and dry them. You know, it's like, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. Gift from the universe. Interesting one. Because, but, you know, waste. So anyway synchronicity right and I've had other things I've had amazing people opportunities little tugs inside me that said go do that and it leads to something opening up or ask the person that question and it, it leads to something wonderful happening you learn to trust it right a synchronicity is like that it's just a feeling and you think oh I'll take that path today instead of that one and you find something or you're going at a different time and there's something there that you wouldn't normally find because you know you're at a different time might have been gone if I not might not have been there if I'd been early that day who knows so that's a synchronicity it's something that just comes out of nowhere and it blesses you and it kind of vibes you up and you think oh that's so cool I feel loved I was just thinking about that a week ago and here it is and I did nothing you know just oh wow and as you said Linda um, quite rightly synchronicities are a definite sign that you're lined up with something because they just come and when you are starting to create yourself and who you want to be and the life that you desire and things just start to flow and they get easier even though nothing outside of you has changed but inside you there's something that's different because you're walking through your life more as the self you want to be, right? 
and things line up and it's it's like the universe the greater mind is dropping breadcrumbs and saying yeah come on come on over here you know here, here's the smarties here's the you call them m and m's the smarties in new zealand um not that i've had any for a very long time um you know the, the little crumbs the little the, the trail of whatever it is that you keep following and it tells you that something in you is lined up enough with the universe to allow that to come in, which is a really cool feeling. Oh, cool. Now, here's the thing. That cool feeling, if you can notice that this, oh, there's a delight. And like, you know, um, those of you who follow my journey with Sang Marie Gomez will know we had a massive miracle. Um, his school fees being paid. Um, for 2020 which is you know that's a lot of money and I was like oh well we've had a pandemic there's a delay I'll think about it next year um, because we've been scrambling just to keep the family eating um, and it just paid and it's like this massive endorsement of all the energy and love that we've all put in to seeing this young man change his life and his family change their lives from the universe say hey see we've got you I've got you it's okay and what I'm learning to do I've learned so much in that journey and this is relevant is to that more and more and he's actually better at this than I am because he's lived in such instability and such insecurity um, that he's kind of more used to dealing with it and he's changed so much it's, it's really very inspiring to me um, that he says I trust the unknown you know I've connected him with Joe Dispenza's work and he does that work and he goes into the unknown and he's clearing his trauma like all of us do sooner or later when we start connecting with the field your Pandora's box is going to open and your ship comes out and you leave and you lose it I, you know, I had another massive really powerful thing happen today um and wow I'm changed and 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 because of that because there's less resistance in you you trust more in what you can't see so you're willing to open up a little bit more. You're willing to let go and lean back into it a little bit more. You're willing to say, hey, the greater mind just wants to give me that. You know, I feel this love in me now. And I do. And it's, it's the sense of connectedness and being held and supported fundamentally by the universe, the greater mind itself, which absolutely adores me and takes every opportunity to let me know that that's the case and and the crazy thing is that this is always how it's been but I wasn't able to perceive it I wasn't because of where I was at and I wasn't so much lack and fear and you know tra -la -la. so when that when when things start to line up or even if they just occasionally line up you think oh that was really cool to, re to remember how it feels when the magic happens and think, oh, there's proof. I must be doing something right. Right, I'll do that again. Because, of course, you know, if you take a bite of the chocolate cake and it's sweet and you really like it, you're going to want another bite, right? Well, this is the same. When you get the synchronicities, when you get the, the nudge and the wink and the poke from the universe, it says, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. I love you so much. I really want to get this stuff to you. But it's going to come from somewhere new because, you know, you're leaving your past and your past hasn't bought you what you want. So I've got to give you new things. And I'm going to blow you away when they can just get through. But you've got to open up and trust me and relax back into it. Um, and it's that dance that we're doing and the more we have the, you know, it's like there's always a parking space for me now, always. It is not a question. And if my brain starts to say, oh, well, you know, it's busy. No, it is never a question that there's always a parking space in a place where there never used to be a parking space. It's like the road opens up for me. There's, there's never anybody where I want to be. That's just how it is in my life now. But it didn't used to be like that. Um, so more and more as I'm starting to relax into, and, I, and it really is starting to continuing to more and more opening myself up to being supported, really is what it's boiled down to for me, it's different for everybody, the more the support comes in. And every time it comes in a little bit more, I relax a, bit, a little bit more, I open up a little bit more, and then more can come in, and it's this kind of success building success thing. And that's what synchronicities are for, really. 
is the universe saying, hey, you can trust me. I've got your back and I really want to give you what you desire. you just got to become it. You've got to become this resonant match. You've got to be entrained and tuned into and as much as you can resonating at the frequency of what you desire in your life. And of course, you know, we talked about how challenging that is yesterday because if you're used to resonating and being and inhabiting and thinking and feeling and everything else like that self that you've been for however long, Of course, your body and your brain are interested in maintaining that as normal, as homeostasis, and you're wanting to change that, and it's going to resist you because it's it's evolutionarily programmed to do that. It's not your enemy, it's just trying to keep you safe. It's all the ego does, by the way. You know, the example that my inspiration Joe Dispenza uses all the time, you're walking down the road and you see, you know, side of the road and you see a, 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 a a car coming and it's a little bit close to you and it's going a bit fast, well, you step back from the curb. That's your ego saying, hey, there's a, there's a risk coming here. We better get out of the way. That's what, that's what it does. And that's what it's supposed to do when it's, when it's in good check, when you are not being the amped up animal running in stress mode, when your frontal lobe is active, it can restrain um, the impulses and the animal responses and reactions that we have. And that's, the ego is a great thing for keeping you safe. Do not jump off the cliff unless you have a parachute and are an experienced base jumper, you know? Um, when the ego gets out of out of whack and, and becomes a real problem is when we're stuck in survival, completely operating in fear or anger or aggression, you know, those animal instincts, the emotional brain gets to run the show, the body gets to run the show, because it's addicted to the chemicals from the emotional brain, it just says, give me more, Um, and then the ego goes rampant, because the frontal lobe, when you're in, in survival, shut down, blood flow is directed away from the frontal lobe. When you're in survival, when you're in stress. And you don't think clearly when you're in stress because that part of your brain is just not getting any supply. (laughs) Powers out in the frontal lobe. Um, And you're just, you know, you're an amped up animal. And that's why you say things that you regret and, you know, you make bad choices. And you think, what the hell was I thinking? Well, you weren't thinking. That's the thing. So... That's why synchronicities, that's why, in fact, synchronicities do keep happening when we're in survival. They're just not synchronicities we like. You know the day, the week, the month, the year when everything just keeps going wrong? That's synchronicity too. It just means you're in a really uncomfortable resonance that is resonating with all of that stuff that you're attracting to yourself. Beat yourself up over the head because, of course, beating yourself up over the head is going. This is going to continue to, you know, think and feel and all of that stuff. No, but realize you've got to change your state, and that's why when the good things do happen, you know, and I mean, if you've had the year of hell and then something wonderful starts to happen because you're starting to change yourself and you're making different choices and choosing to feel different feelings, even though it feels really, really wrong, and then you know, suddenly something, something really sweet and 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 little and lovely just arrives milk that good feeling for all it's worth and remember it I am consciously making choices to remember the moment just a few days ago now when I sat at my in, at my computer doing my email opened the email from the donor and went wow oh my god wow <gasps> this you know this the bill's been wow wow I'm choosing to remember it to remember that feeling what it feels like because the more I can hold that space in myself, the more it's going to happen that I get to say, wow, blow me away again, universe. That's, that's the thing. So you use the excitement and the joy to generate more of this stuff, to focus more on it, to be the person who has more of that happening. Because you're in that space where it can reach you, where it's a resonant match. And it means leaning back and trusting it. It means letting go of our human propensity that when something comes along, and again, I've just been reading this, I just want to listen to Joe say this, because I love this information, it's so empowering. When we go into survival, what we do is we chuck in an automatic program, right? And whatever it is that we're used to doing, we do it more and we do it harder. Okay, 
I need to study. I need to succeed. I better study harder. I better start later. I better do more hours. I better stress more, right? I better push harder. Don't we just try harder and harder when something's not working? And the hardest thing can be to actually say, feck, this isn't working. Oh, I gotta let it go. I gotta stop trying. Talked about that a bit yesterday. It's counterintuitive because we just want to try harder and harder until we overcome, we break through, we escape the lion. But that doesn't work when there's no lion. So it really is the synchronicities are the universe, the greater mind, intelligent love and loving intelligence saying to you, come on, I just want to get this stuff to you. Can you lean back into me? Let go of everything you think about how it should come to you and what it should look like and all of that stuff. Can you just let go and habit the feeling and expect it to come out of nowhere? And the more I do that, little by little, because, you know, I've got this great analytical mind and always wants to understand, how's it going to happen? No, I don't know. But I'm better at letting go and trusting what I can't see now. So, there's my rave about synchronicities. I hope it was useful. <laughs> I'm sure it sparked some ideas for some people. I can't see your comments. It's such a, you know, the, the physics of it, the making yourself a, a, a resonant match, and I talk about that a lot. But to actually speak about synchronicities and say, well, you know, this is what they're for, it really is about trusting. But it's not that trusting in something that, you know, it's not white knuckle trusting. It isn't the oh, I gotta trust this. You know, I'm I'm terribly scared of heights, and I'm about to take a parachute jump. No, it's not that. It's about actually relaxing and coming back into feeling like you're being held in a you know in a feather down. And the parachute jump, you you accomplish the parachute jump in that kind of safety. That's what synchronicities are for. So that you know that no matter what your senses are telling you about how scary life should be, that you don't believe them because you know you're held. You know you're safe, you know you're supported. And the greater mind keeps sending you these, dropping these breadcrumbs, sending you these little love gifts, say, hey, I got you. That's the last piece, it's what I needed to say. I know I'm over time. Big love, thank you for sharing with me this this Friday. It's, out, it's the last full week before that holiday season thing finally and, and per, it turns up. I haven't even worked out when I'm stopping yet, but I will. I will stop for a break. There will be resonant replays. You can trust that. Um, it's nearly the solstice, and there's a lot shifting this time of the year. I encourage you to make the most of it. When there's chaos, when there's disruption, it is the best time to create. Because everything's broken apart anyway. Why not do something new with it? So much love. Thank you for sharing this week with me. I will see you on Sunday, Monday. Bye-bye.